good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Is it? Good girl, okay. So I know that I said that I was going to be staying in Bishop or the Eastern Sierra. Bishop is one of the areas that I was in for a couple of weeks. And not surprisingly, that has changed. <laughs> it wasn't that Bishop had anything wrong with it. It wasn't that the weather got too cold. It wasn't that I didn't want to be alone because I'm still a lot of those things, cold, alone, and tired. But something that I've realized over the past couple of weeks, pretty much since my midpoint of being in Baja and then coming back here, is that I want to live a little differently on the road. I want to live with more intention. I want to live with more purpose. And it's not that I haven't been doing those things necessarily, but it's that I felt very aimless Going to Baja was a reflection of that, I think, just because it's something that everyone does and I have to do it at least once and this might as well be the year. Aimless, ungrounded, just kind of going with the wind. And there's a time for that. And I think the time for that for me was the past few years on the road or on and off the road in between builds. Whereas now I feel settled in the truck. I feel like this is home. I feel very grounded in my rig, in my space, in my life. But the way that I've been living on the road has not been a great reflection of that. And so some things are changing. Now I realize what I just said probably sounds like I'm considering getting off the road and I don't think that's where I'm headed. I don't have a reason to or a desire to get off the road. But I do wanna travel slower. I do want to start looking at places, areas, regions, mountains, deserts with a more open mindset. I want to get to know the communities that I'm visiting. I want to go into town more and I want to walk around. I want to go to the coffee shop. I want to talk to locals and just start to get a feel for what it is that I might look for in my next chapter, in my next era. And so in the very long term, we're talking years here, I think I want to start figuring out where I might want to live one day, like long term, long term, not just for free for 14 days. And speaking of off-grid living, let's take a moment to hear a word from today's sponsor. One of the less expected benefits I've noticed since coming to Colorado is the power of the sun out here. And as winter slowly gives way to spring, I'm able to recharge faster than ever, powering my internet, my camper, and all of my gear simultaneously, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Blue Eddy. Having utilized a variety of their stations over the years, I've come to deeply understand my power needs across various seasons and weather conditions, depending on what I need to charge on any given day which over time has drawn me to what I think is the perfect combination of power and portability found in the AC200L. Now, all of you know that I love to use my Blue Eddy every single day to run my internet around the clock and work off grid, but the power station is capable of so much more than that. On a full charge, I could easily use the AC200L to power my laptop charging at full tilt for up to 31 hours. I could run a 20 cubic foot fridge, which is five times larger than my current fridge in the camper for one and a half days. Or I could throw it back to the holiday time and use my Instapot again to make a stew for over four hours at a thousand watts of output. But all of this honestly just scratches the surface. Anything you wanna charge, you pretty much can, as long as it falls under that combined total of 2,400 watts of output, which means that you could charge a variety of these things at the same time. Now I know what you're thinking. All of this sounds great, but don't you already have power in your camper? And yes, I do. But the reason I love my Blue Eddy so much is not only do I not have to touch the camper's system in order to enjoy luxuries like internet off grid, but I also have great peace of mind because I know if anything were to ever happen to the camper, whether it's my solar, one of the electronic components or my battery, I would have backup power for emergencies while on the road. And this translates really well for people who live in homes as well. And I cannot wait in the coming years to eventually find a place to settle down and put 
put my Blue Eddy to the test around the house as well. Now, if you've made it this far and you're coming off the tripod, we're getting personal here, I'm sure that you all heard about the giveaway that I've been running with Blue Eddy over this past week. To enter, all you had to do was drop a comment that included the word Blue Eddy in last week's video before this past Thursday, the 21st. And after putting everyone's names into a random generator, we'll do a drum roll. That was a terrible drum roll. <laughs> the winner of the Blue Eddy AC 180 power station is Kathy Keys 7872. Now, in order to get in contact with me, Kathy, I don't want to reach out to you because it's a great way for spam bots to infiltrate my comment sections and all of your emails. Kathy, if you could please shoot me an email at hello at sheroamswild.co. I'll put it here so it's easy. Uh, and have some form of identification included in that email so I can make sure that it's you we'll go ahead and chat about getting you that power station as soon as possible and for everybody else thank you so much for all of your comments and your participation it did not go unnoticed and as much as I wish that I could give every single one of you a power station unfortunately it's just not in the cards for this week but if you all enjoyed this process I will definitely be reaching back out to Blue Eddy to try to run more of these giveaways in the future to get more power in all of your hands and until then if you want to check out the Blue Eddy spring sale where you can save over $19 $1,800 on your next purchase through March 24th. Be sure to head to the link down in my description down below to learn more about how Blue Eddy power stations might add to your life. And thank you again to Blue Eddy for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's get back to it. So that was just about three miles and took just under 30 minutes with our stops and all of my looping back and forth to come get her. And I'm sure you're thinking three miles is literally nothing and you're right, it's not much. But the goal here is really just to very slowly, like half mile by half mile, work her up to longer days, especially in the sun, which is also why we only did three miles because she's a long haired dog, she gets hot. Um, it's only like 55 outside, but it's just intense up here. So yeah, just trying to build up her paws and get her endurance up there so that way hopefully in the spring and summer this year, maybe even fall, we can do some bike packing trips door is about to slam um but yeah i'm really just getting into this i was looking for a way to do more overnight trips with her in areas that are both bike and hiker dog friendly more to come on that i'm sure um if you guys are interested in seeing us like i don't know go on a trip or something or um for her first bike packing trip let me know in the comments down below and i'll be sure to make a video about it By now, I'm sure most of you have seen me bullet journal, which isn't surprising since it's something I've been doing since around high school. But I will say that a lot has changed since then, and right now I'm focusing on the long term, which means that my bullet journal reflects this. I'm looking out many months ahead, so even though my current journal focuses on months, 
dates, notes, gratitudes, habit tracking, and my current focus areas, it's all with long-term goals or focuses in mind, which is how I've been able to maintain things like a regular reading habit. Right now, I'm enjoying Eating to Extinction by Dan Saladino, which focuses on some of the world's rarest foods and why we need to save them, along with the reasons that they're going extinct in the first place. Are you tired from chasing all those chipmunks? <laughs> Don't like it? and doubles as an office during the week. It's good to see our pizzas getting better, from a first setup with a shovel and a tarp to a proper structured tools and table. Okay, so I'm just getting some video downloaded for work today, and I went to go to the bathroom, and unfortunately my toilet was like full, full. And as I went to dump it, I realized it's been a really long time since I've actually like properly cleaned it out, and so I'm gonna do that now. It's kind of gross, I'm not gonna show you the toilet toilet but what i'm gonna be using is just some white vinegar i'm gonna put this in here first and like slosh it all around the jug then i'm gonna go inside and boil some water to add to it let that kind of sit and then i have a brush specifically for the toilet that i'm gonna have to put my hand in there and try to clean it out and this is just to help prevent like scaling and build up again i know it's gross but it's just a part of it <laughs> It is somehow already 1.17 in the afternoon, which normally would not be that big of a deal. It's early, we still have a lot of daylight, but I just checked the weather because I know tonight a storm is supposed to be rolling in and the clouds are already here to stay. And it says we're actually supposed to get rain in about a half hour. Now I've been storing my bike outside, just locked to the outside of the truck while we've been here because I've been riding it every day and it's been nice to have out and not have to put it away and like take off the wheel and all of that every day but I don't really want it sitting out in the rain and tomorrow we're supposed to get like a 
lot of rain I think and so I'm gonna go start cleaning up outside just to hopefully minimize the amount of water that actually gets on it and same goes for the rest of my stuff hello miss what are you doing hiding under there oh, hi. hello My current travel pattern has had me moving much slower than I have in the past, which allows me to observe weather and seasons changing in a way that I haven't before. And all of this makes me extremely excited and grateful for the opportunity to potentially call a piece of land like this my own in the future.